I'm Tony Baker, and I will be taking you through Six String Country's guitar course on how to turn scales into guitar solos, and today we're focusing on the pentatonic scale. All you need to know to get going taking this course, once we jump into things here, is how to play the pentatonic scale over the five positions, the five box shapes of the pentatonic scale. We're going to review that in just a moment here, um, but just to give a little introduction to what we're going to be getting into, uh, is taking these pentatonic shapes that we know and turning them into something musical. And we'll do that by looking at how to apply different techniques, how to apply bends to the scales, how to apply hammer-ons and pull-offs, sliding up and down fluently across the whole neck uh, so we can use the whole neck in a musical way, uh, connecting the scales with slides, working on melodic phrasing so that it sounds like we're singing with the guitar rather than regurgitating a scale. We're gonna be doing that by learning these short solo clips over this background track. Um, and it's gonna demonstrate these different styles. And then after all of that, we'll have a new backing track that's a faster country style backing track. And we're gonna go over um, just one short solo, but we're gonna apply all these techniques we use and then figure out how to move these into different keys. And the goal of this is gonna be hopefully that we'll be able to start thinking about these pentatonic scales musically and able to apply them in jamming situations, playing with bands, improvising, and uh, turning our knowledge into something more than just uh, where we can run the scales up and down the neck, which is good, where we have to start, but where we can make things interesting and musical. The first thing we'll do is review what we're talking about when we're talking about these pentatonic box shapes. The numbering can be a source of confusion sometimes, which was surprising to me as I started doing these lessons many years ago. But when we're talking about the major pentatonic scale, I'm talking about this. That is what I call position one. And a lot of people think, no, position one is. And I'll explain uh, what the difference is there. And no one's wrong, it's just what we're talking about. This is position one when we're talking about the major pentatonic scale because this is the first degree of the pentatonic scale in G major, right? And this is a G note. There's five notes in the pentatonic scale. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, right? But if we go up the neck, first degree, second, third, fourth, fifth. So position one is going to correspond with the first degree that I just played. All right, position two is going to correspond with the second degree. This, this little intro isn't necessarily to teach you guys this. Hopefully you know this already, um, but we want to be talking about the same language. And if you need to brush up, we do have the scale diagrams and uh, the tabs uh, below the video player here with the sheet music. Okay, position three corresponds with the third degree of the scale, right here. Position four corresponds with the fourth. Position five corresponds with the fifth degree of the scale, this E note. Now why do some people think this is position one? That's a good, fair question, and that's because that is position one of the minor pentatonic scale, right? The relative minor for the key of G major is E minor. So if you learned or your teacher taught you to play these pentatonic scales starting with the minor pentatonic, then this is position one. For the same reasons. Because E minor pentatonic scale, this is an E note. That's the first degree of the E minor scale. Then this would be position two. Right, and so on and so forth. All the way, up. same thing if your teacher started you with the blues scale. That's very similar to the minor pentatonic. And that would be position one. Um, but we're not talking about that, we're talking about the G major pentatonic scale. So that's the difference, okay? And that's why we're going to go with the numbering that I talked about. And again, it's just semantics, they're the same shapes, 
Um, but we, as we're going through a course like this, we want to all be on the same page. And it'll become really important when we're talking about changing keys at the end of the course, when we're thinking mentally about what position we're using. Um, so this is going to be based upon uh, the major pentatonic numbering system. This is going to be a study of how we can slide up and down the neck uh, fluidly while we're soloing and we can get out of the mindset of, okay, it's my turn to solo, I'm going to pick one box shape and just stay there the whole time. We don't need to do that because these all lock together so nicely. Um, so let's look at this little solo that you just saw and dissect it, okay? This first one, we're starting out in position one, right, right here. <laughs> and we're playing a G chord, the band's playing a G chord. And so the first riff is. Okay, and you'll notice how when we're landing, that's right on the root. That's why it doesn't clash and it doesn't sound good because, or it doesn't not sound good because G chords have Gs, Bs, and Ds, and we're landing on the root. So that's a safe note to land on and rest. Uh, so let's just go over that. Three, hammer on to five. Two of A, five, slide up to seven. And then your middle finger's right in position to play that root note, the fifth fret of D. And notice how now we are in second position. Right, so we just migrated from first position to second position already, and it was nice and fluid. Continuing on, we have this. All right, and the next chord is an E minor. And we're landing on an E note, it's an E note. And we're also sliding into the third position there. Okay, so let's go over that real quick. Uh, what we did there was we started on the seventh fret of the D string, four of G, seven, pull off to four, and I'll slide up seven to nine. We're right there on that E minor chord. And now we're going to have to shift our fingers a little bit, get more in this position for position three, and we'll go eight, ten, eight, all hammer runs and pull offs, and then slide up seven to nine. And now, by the way, we're in position four. So already we've already gotten into finger position for position four. So so far in the solo we have this one, two. Uh, and again, that's the that same E note, right? And they're holding an E minor, so that's a great note to stop on. And then we have this. The band starts playing a C note. That's a B. A point that I'll clarify here a little bit is that there's not any hard and fast rules. It's not that you can only land on the three notes of a triad of a chord. Quite to the contrary. We just need to be aware of that. And in this case, the B would give us the C major 7 feel, and it sounds pretty nice in this progression. Now, if on a, you're on a C chord, a note that you need to be careful with is this F sharp. That, you know, changes the sound of the chord a lot. Kind of nice though, depending on if that's what you're going for. But we want to be aware that if we're going to land or start a riff on an F sharp, you got to want to do that. In this case, I like starting the riff on the B, and it gives us a chance to kind of break our own rule already, even though, like I said, there's really no rules. We're just gonna trust our ear here. All right, so here's over the C major, what we're gonna play. All right, and we are still landing on this G note, which is part of the C chord, all right? So we're sliding into 10, from 10 to 12, twice on the B string, and then back to 10. Now right in this pentatonic box shape, right? 12 of G, 9, hammer on to 12, 10 of B, 12 of G, and then we're going to shift our fingers here to get ready to slide up to position 5, and we'll do this. All right, and we're ending on that D chord, and again, we're ending right on that A note, which is 
right in the middle of the chord, right as a fifth, okay? Um, so what we did there was 10 of B, 12 of G, slide up 10 to 12, then you're all, now you're right in position for position five. 15 of B, 12 of high E, 15, pull off to 12, and when you do this, you'll wanna anticipate barring the B and G string with that pointer finger so that you can go 12 of G and slide it up to 14 to end on that A note. All right, so let's hit that uh, one more time from the top. One, two. is an example, just one example, of how we can slide all the way from position one through position five in a relatively short little solo there and hit all the pentatonic box shapes and make it nice and fluid and nice and musical. Try over this backing track, try writing a couple yourself, some different ways to slide back and forth um, between the different positions and focus on landing on notes that you like the sound of when the band's playing what they're playing.